Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the November 15, 2005 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. Uh, the first item on our agenda is uh, to review and approve the minutes of our prior meeting from October 18 of 2005. First, I would ask, are there any uh, suggested changes or corrections? I move that they be accepted. Second. Okay, we have a move for acceptance and it's been seconded. All those in favor? Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, quickly review of the correspondence before us this evening. We have a memo from the town manager regarding Spurwink Woods, a memorandum from the police chief regarding Spurwink Woods, planning board Paper Street vacation recommendation, uh, the July 2005 issue of zoning practice, the planning commissioner's journal from the fall of 2005, memorandum from the town manager regarding the high school traffic light, uh, a South Portland public hearing announcement, and an email from Jay Labrie regarding Spurwink Woods. <coughs> <laughs> Under old business uh, was uh, the in by the sea site plan amendments. My understanding is uh, that the in by the sea has requested that this application be tabled as they are working on revising their plans. Do I have a motion? I, I move that the uh, uh, application of in by the sea for a site plan review be tabled to the December 20th, 2005 meeting. Is there a second? The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, on to new business. Uh, Sunrise Island LLC private access way permit. Uh, Len Galino of Sunrise Island LLC is requesting a private access way permit to create a new lot located at 78 Wells Road, R5-41, section 19-7-9, private access way completeness. At this point, I would ask the applicant to come forward and bring us up to date on where we are in this application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Len Galino uh, on behalf of the applicant. And um, first, just a couple of preliminaries. Uh, as you may see from the fact that I'm somewhat uh, challenged in the hair growth department, you might get the impression that I'm an old hand at doing these planning board proceedings. But uh, in fact, this is my first time through the process. So I just mentioned that because to the extent that I violate any of the typical protocols a more practitioner might have, my apologies up front. And um, thankfully that um, both Maureen and Bruce were very patient um, with my many phone calls and visits to them to, and my efforts to try to make sure that we were dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. And hopefully we did that and we didn't cross the I's and dot the T's. So um, with that said, uh, what I'm asking for tonight from the board are two things. Uh, first is a certification of completeness, and second is conditional approval of the um, private access way. And um, what I would proceed to do is address the first thing first, which is, of course, the certification of completeness, because we have to, I guess, establish that before we move on to the next phase. As far as the certification of completeness goes, Maureen's given us her notes uh, that indicated pretty much substantially all of it was completed except one item was partial and that had to do, as I understand it, with establishing the, um, the floodplain um, on the particular site. And what I've done is asked our surveyor Owen Haskell to do that for us and they've taken the plan that's already been presented and put on this plan, the uh, floodplain line which, as you can see, uh, the building envelope is right about here. Um, and the floodplain line, which I understand is the 100-year floodplain, runs uh, south of that. And she indicated that she didn't put it around the first time because she didn't think it was a material issue for this particular building site. Um, but nevertheless, we put that on. So uh, I don't believe that's a material modification of the plan. Um, and I would submit to you that the plan as with this minor modification, which is not material, could be accepted. Uh, which leaves the only other thing that came to me with the notes, which was uh, Ost Associates comments on the road design plan, which we gave to you. And um, basically those comments primarily went to showing the calculations that the engineer used in coming up with her plan and also uh, enhancing the erosion control. And 
I've asked um, Sebago Technics to go ahead and make all those changes and they have in fact added those changes to the road, supplemented the road design plan to add all those things as requested by OST. Um, so we've addressed it, each of those. However, it's, I don't know exactly how to proceed with this, but I would assume that that enhancement to the road design uh, is more in the deliberative process um, phase of this application process. So unless the board feels that completeness requires the submission of that plan now, and so long as I can su supplement the application during the deliberative process with a further offer, uh, I would move for the determination and completeness as submitted with this supplemental plan that I'm pointing to right here provided by Haskell, Owen Haskell. Just very quickly, I, I assume, though it's hard for me to see, that the building envelope is above the floodplain? Yes, it is. And okay. I have copies for everybody. If you would like me to pass them out, I can. I think we're all set. Okay. Uh, at this point, we're determining the issue of completeness. It appears that perhaps a motion is in order. David? Motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Sunrise Island LLC of, for a private access way permit to create a new lot with insufficient frontage located at 78 Wells Road be deemed complete. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you very much. I'll move over then to the next phase, which is the approval, uh, whether we approve it, not approve it, or move it um, to some other phase of the process. Um, and there's a couple of few items that are not shown in the application that I would like to highlight in just a moment that I think are of critical importance to consider on the question of whether to just approve the plan tonight or move it to some kind of public hearing. Um, but before I get to those, I just want to uh, recap a few items. Um, we have, I believe, done substantial due diligence on this particular project and in all ways tried to comply fully with the ordinance and the spirit of the ordinance. Uh, we've done a wetlands assessment um, through a wetlands uh, uh, professional. We've had a soil assessment for the, um, for the uh, septic systems. We've had professional survey work done. We've, of course, reviewed the ordinances with KR to make sure we're complying with them. We've had multiple conferences. We've gone through the, um, through the workshop phase of the, of the process. Uh, we've had site distances professionally assessed, as well as had the Director of Public Works come out and assess those, and he has issued a uh, driveway building permit. Um, we've had the Fire Chief review the plans from the Fire Chief's perspective to approve them, and he has approved them. And of course, we have had elaborate design work performed by uh, Sebago Technics to provide a road, um, which um, I will get to in a moment, that I think is uh, uh, very complete and, and adequately addresses um, all of the issues. Excuse me, Len, if I could just jump in yep. quickly here. Uh, I know, we, I, I know you, what you're seeking is an approval right. tonight. I'm just going to pose a question to the town planner to see whether the town staff has had an opportunity to review all of your plans at this point. The one, the one thing I would add is it's conditional approval. I'm not asking for approval tonight of any of these enhancements to the plan that we are offering. What I'm seeking is conditional approval conditioned upon both OST Associates and the planner having an opportunity to review all the enhancements to make sure that we, we've adequately addressed all the issues raised by OST. Town staff has had a full review and what you have in your package is a, a fairly detailed letter from the town engineer, which is the typical kind of letter that you've used to reference for approvals. So it's potentially ripe for an approval. All the other staff have reviewed it and no other comments have been made. And so when you say what you when you made the reference to the town engineer's letter, an approval could be subject to the satisfaction of the conditions set forth in the letter from Steve Harding. Yes, it's the type of letter that you typically will make a condition of approval. The, the only other issue is 
you know, we haven't seen the floodplain line. I'm assuming the floodplain line is below the building envelope. If you approved it subject to the floodplain line being added to the plans and then we looked at it and it created a problem, you just have to come back anyway. So it's possible. Okay. Barbara. One last question to Maureen is, has anybody called about this project? Not that I remember. Okay. David? Well, I was just curious, is this something that you're planning to get in the ground this fall before the winter? Uh, very well might, yes. I mean, interest rates have been moving up, so I'm getting anxious to move it along. The reason why I interrupted you is I just wanted to get a sure. sense from the board as to whether there would be a willingness to consider final or the conditional approval that you talk about subject to what the town engineer has said or whether you'd be wasting your time tonight. Thank you. And, uh, it seems to me in taking the temperature of the town planner and the board that people might be willing to consider the conditional approval? Yes. Okay. So with that said, why don't, why don't you then continue? Great. As far as the road design goes, um, I think it's, I can suffice it to say that we believe, or at least Sebago Technics believes, that we have fully addressed all of the issues raised by OST in their letter. But in any event, I'm not asking for that determination tonight. That will be subject to OST Associates and the plan, uh, town planner to confirm. So I won't go into detail on all those other than to say each of these items that we've highlighted in yellow, um, we um, are new to this plan for the, uh, to the road. There's supplements to the plan to the road to try, try to address all those issues. Um, Excuse me, Len, we just yes. seem to have one I, question. I think it would be helpful, perhaps, if you just quickly went through them for us. Happy to, if you want me to. Sure. Because if we're going to give you approval conditioned upon the letter for most associates, then we should know what you have in mind. Absolutely. And I have extra copies if the board cares for those copies. But I'll just proceed with this unless you tell me otherwise. Um, any, excuse me, would any member of the planning board like to look along? The extra copy? I mean, he has copies with him tonight. Sure. sure. Okay. okay. Consider approval. We should probably look at that. Right. Thank you. First, um, on the upper, as you face the page, the upper left-hand corner, um, one of the requests was to add, or one of the requirements of the statute is to add the turning radius, and it has to be a minimum of 20 uh, feet turning radius so that the fire truck can get in. And we've added, um, Sebago Technics has added that um, uh, curve to meet the minimum requirements of 20 feet and added those determinations right both at the mouth of the driveway coming out to the road, and then also down at the other end, you'll see at the turnaround that the 20-foot uh, radii are included. The second thing that um, Ost uh, or, or mentioned was that the building permit from the Director of Public Works indicated that vegetation on the easterly side of the proposed driveway be removed and O suggested that that be added to the plan. So you'll note on the upper left-hand corner, it says existing vegetation will basically be removed. So we've added that notation. The next item is that Ost proposed that... Excuse me. Is that, is that in the right-of-way or on, on the property itself? It's on uh, just to this side, to the easterly side. This is westerly, this is easterly, that's northerly. And to the easterly side, there are some rose bushes along the existing driveway, which is over here, just between the new driveway and the old driveway. And um, the, the uh, Director of Public Works requested that those be removed. And OS just noted that that request or requirement be added to this plan. So we've complied with that. The 
other thing is that on there is going to be two. Excuse me. I'm, I'm still, it's just a follow-up question. Sure. I'm just still not clear. Is that being cleared in the in the public right away, or is that being cleared on your presently your land? I believe it's our land. And 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 the roses that grew up originate will originate on the uh, what's going to remain is part of the lot or part of the new lot. Well, right now I own the whole parcel. Sure. And it, it's this whole parcel here. And as you see the house right here, just uh, to the left, as you look at this driveway, just to the left of this driveway, between this driveway and that new proposed driveway, there are a bunch of ro the clump of roses about the size of a Volkswagen. And um, basically, uh, he's requested we remove them. We don't have a problem with that. It's on the old lot, then. It's on the old lot, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. On the old lot. Okay. Some of the other requests were that um, we add basically speed bumps to the drainage ditch that goes down along the sides of the proposed new driveway. The flow of the water or the land, excuse me, the flow of the water would be down from left to right or from to north to south. And in order to slow the flow of water down, um, Ostry suggested additions of drainage bumps in the uh, actual uh, drainage ditches, and those have been added. And then also, you can see that um, the so-called stone check dam describes that in more detail. The other comment by Host Associates was that in order to prevent any um, runoff of silt, um, that there be screen fabric added to this uh, side of the proposed driveway along this bare, uh, edge here and the erosion control um, so-called I believe both the erosion control blankets and filter barriers address those issues along this edge. The other thing they added with regard to uh, erosion control was I believe they wanted some of the identification of the size of the drain that would go from this inside edge of the proposed new driveway, which is near the turnaround, to the outside edge. And they've added those calculations there and um, described that with more detail. And they've also, uh, per OS requirement, put in that they would install um, lining to line the what's so called plunge pool over here. So all those are per the suggestions of OST. And these notes, the general notes, add description of exactly how those would be added um, to the um, erosion control process. The last, I believe, substantive proposed change that the engineer had, and we did go back and forth a little bit with the engineer on this, and that's under this typical driveway cross section that you see here. Under our original plan, we had proposed 15 inches of gravel plus a blacktop and because um, Sebago thought that that was sufficient under the ordinance. The Oast Associates came back, Steve Harden, and suggested we have the 15 inches plus 3 inches of type A on top of that and um, we have uh, initially Sebago suggested that we not push for that. Oast Steve said that he did think about not having it because it is being blacktop but he, his ultimate recommendation was to have it so we added it. So that is in there. You can see the cross section of adding the three inches of crushed gravel. It'd be two inches of asphalt, three inches of crushed gravel, 15 inches of gravel sub base. Len, we're trying to uh, check off the conditions in Mr. Uh, Harding's letter. I don't know if you're done, but let me just grab that. I'm kind of reading over the town planner's shoulders and. I'm wondering if number six has been dealt with. Sure. It's the uh, incorporating a plunge pool. Say that again. Well, the, the, the letter states, given the steep slope of the ditch flowing into the level lip fretter, 
the designer may wish to incorporate a plunge pool or some other energy dissipator upgrading of the spreader. I'm yeah, my under sure I understand what that means. My understanding is that these these changes here, there's a um, just the opposite end of the hammerhead. Yeah, the energy okay. dissipator yep. are the dams, and then also. I don't believe this original drain on one side was there. They added this drain over here to pull it, pull water underneath the road over to the plunge pool. Okay. And as I indicated, if the O says, you know, we got to add a dam here or a plunge pool there, I mean, it's, we've gone to this extent. We're not going to skimp on another uh, additional piece of erosion control. Um, so I believe, just let me check quickly, I think that covers all of his requests. Stone check dams. We've added the radii. Yeah, so I believe that we've covered all of the requests for most. Um, So unless anybody has further questions about the road supplement, I'll move on to my other points. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about the road itself and what we've heard? Okay. The only question I have is for Maureen. It, it shows a 13 and a half degrees uh, percent slope. Is, are there any restrictions in the access? Yeah, nope. <laughs> okay. okay. So I think, any other questions? Yeah, any other? Mm -hmm. pretty steep. It is steep. I think, though, that Maureen, oh, excuse me, Maureen, I'm sorry, Stephanie at Sebago Technics did, uh, if you look at these lines here, work to smooth out the slope. So in other words, they're taking the proposals to take off, trim off some of the top edge of the slope, and then fill in some of the middle slope that it's more of a constant grade all the way down. Oh, I understand. I'm just envisioning the owner of this home is, are you moving into this one and selling the other one, or are you? Who it's, knows? it's up. Well, whoever's in this home, I'm familiar with the site, and they're they go charging up the hill, and they're going to hit this five percent slope at the top, which isn't. It's pretty, still pretty steep, and they're going to be hitting the brakes coming onto Wells Road at a point where the road comes in up and turning to the right from the uh, from the left or the west, I guess, and coming down to the left from the, uh, from the eastern side, and I just, it's, well, the, it's, the, it's, it's not a happy thought. Yeah, the, the site is pretty interesting in the sense that it is definitely downgrade this way to the south. However, the first to about where the, um, the, the house, the L part of the existing house is, this ha existing house for, sort of forms an L. Right. Until you get about here, which is a probably 50 feet back off the road. It's relatively flat. And then it drops off from this point downward. So that first section to get on and off of Wells Road is not particularly bad. Coming down off it, I mean, off Wells isn't the issue. It's getting back up. But you're telling me that there's enough space there yep. that yep. even if they went charging up the hill, there's plenty of room to... Yeah, you really don't have... I mean, it's not like you're going to have to gun it up the hill to get out onto Wells Road. Where, where it's steep is in this section, the first half of this proposed roadway is steep. Then when you get up to this area, it levels off quite substantially. Okay. Uh, it's maybe, I mean, we could probably figure it out. It's relatively insignificant. It's right? showing 5% here. Yeah. For a run of about 30 feet as I read the plan, which is, it's enough to slow up and then reaccelerate to get back on the road without yeah. playing chicken with the existing yeah. traffic. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, but I don't think that is a, a problem because of the way it levels off as it comes to the road. As soon as I saw 13 and a half, I'm just choking on that issue, but it's, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's very doable. There's another house down to the left that has a similar configuration, a little bit less grade, but similar idea where it goes down quite a, a steep, steep uh, grade. Um, so, you know, as far as the specifics of the requirements, the application, we think it is complete and, and complies complete with, completely with the ordinance. Um, 
The other things, a few other things I would add to, the, to this application, though, as to why I think it's ripe for consideration. We were very sensitive to the needs of our um, neighbors around, and one of the first things I did was to go and meet with my neighbors, both of the abutters, on both sides. And uh, they, I think they are comfortable. Their absence here, I think, indicates that while maybe nobody likes to see more development, they have not expressed opposition to it. And in fact, Mr. Braun, who is the butter that lives on this side, which is the westerly side, um, and would be, have the closest impact by this road, you know, indicated that his house pretty much looks to the southwest, and he, he basically said, it's your property, you can do what you want with it, and did not really have a problem with it. He said, best of luck to you. Um, so I don't see the need for a public hearing, given the fact that we've noticed those neighbors and of course, the, the town has noticed a whole additional list of neighbors as well, and I don't believe there's been any material opposition to the application. The other thing I would note is that, as you can in, see from, at least partially sees from some of the photos in the soil uh, wetlands assessment that was included by Dale Brewer, this is a very private parcel. There are houses all along Wells Road along here, and it's a pretty steep drop coming off there. So it's almost impossible to see this building site uh, from anywhere along Wells Road along here. And the only house that's really materially impacted is the house I own. The other abutting neighbors, Curtis and Braun, really don't look directly on this. During the summer, you cannot even see the building site because the trees which line the property between my parcel and the Curtis, there's another parcel in between really lines that. And even on the bronze side, there's a strong line of trees along that side. So it's very hard to see it, certainly during the summer. During the winter, you might be able to see through a little bit by either one of those. But as far as anybody else seeing it, it's almost impossible to see it. The only place you can really see this site at all is way across um, Sawyer Road. As you go down Sawyer Road towards Scarborough, I think it's, it's probably right about two-thirds of the way across. You can see in the far distance this particular building site. So I really don't think it impacts negatively anybody um, by this particular application. And as I've said, we've already gone through a quasi-public process. We have not tried in any way to keep this hidden or anything else. Um, we, of course, are going to enhance the property substantially uh, as part of this process. We will uh, update um, the existing house. The existing house is a 30-plus year old septic system. Uh, part of the prop proposal is to put the road in, remove that, put in a new septic system up there. So we think we're going to be enhancing the water quality. And so for all those reasons, um, you know, we re I really feel that it's ripe for approval. It complies with the ordinance, and I would move or request the uh, board to, to approve the application this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we do need to talk about whether we ought to proceed uh, with uh, approval tonight or whether anybody feels a public hearing or a site walk is necessary. Any thoughts on that? David? I don't really see as a site walk as important to me at this point. And I don't think that there's a hearing. I don't think there's necess necessity for a hearing. And we have in the past uh, moved directly from a planning of completeness to an approval, especially when there have been no uh, uh, issues raised by any of the abutters, correct? And we have authority to do that. Is everybody agreeable that we move on to the approval stage then? This I agree with Dave's position. Okay. Any further questions or discussion of the application? Is there a motion then for the board to consider? Sure. Uh, and although it appears that Len has gone through all the conditions set forth in the town engineer's right. letter, no, I'm gonna, you got that? I, okay. And writing and, as we're, and listening as, we're ta as we've been listening to the applicant. Um, I move that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, that the application of Sunrise Island LLC for a, for a private access way permit to create a new lot with insufficient frontage located at 78 Wells Road be approved, conditioned on the applicant implementing the recommendations of, of the town engineers in his uh, November 8, 2005 letter and as shown on the plan dated uh, November 14th, 2005, as submitted and as stated to the board this evening. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, do you want to I incorporated the plan dated 
I, yeah. I think that cover, the floodplain is dealt. Well, I, ref I reference both plans. Okay. I second that motion. Okay, motion has been uh, made and seconded. Uh, I, there just was a question from the town planner, the floodplain sure. issue, and I just want to make sure we've dealt with that. Well, is that, is that, that's not reflected in this plan then? Okay. Is, and it's not on the plan we have submitted? I have. The plan that's on the board. Yeah. It's, it's, the plan that you have submitted that shows the entire lot does not show the floodplain. I see. He has on the board behind him that plan that shows the entire lot with the floodplain shown on there. And he, and if we can he just make it a condition that he submits that plan? Right. The then, then I'll amend my motion to include that the applicant submit the plan showing the floodplain as he stated to the board this evening. So, motion has been amended. Is there a second? Second is amended. Okay. Any uh, further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just a couple of housekeeping items. I have both the supplemental plan that I can submit now to Maureen, if that's appropriate, and I also have the Mylar um, for signature by the board, if that's appropriate. That, you have to wait to the appeal period once. On the, okay. Yeah. Well, for, yeah, sig we'll, for we'll, signatures. We'll take uh, all of that now, Glenn. Sure. Thank you. Uh, the last item on the agenda under uh, new business, the Spurwink Woods LLC is requesting preliminary subdivision review and a resource protection permit for Spurwink Woods, a 43-unit subdivision proposed for the area between Dermot Drive and Kildeer Road. The application includes 19 condominiums and 23 single-family home lots on 24.97 acres. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 16-2-4 subdivision regulations and Section 19-8-3 resource protection regulations. Uh, the primary issue for us this evening is to determine whether the application is complete. Uh, so there will not be a public hearing tonight, but I obviously understand there's a lot of interest in the project, so we're glad that you're here. Uh, we are also missing three planning board members tonight. Uh, we'll review as, as as much as you like tonight, but I, I think my preference would be to keep it limited for the, because there are going to be a couple planning board members that will have to catch up 
if we go into too much detail. But in any event, I would ask you to just introduce the project and where you are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Mitchell of Mitchell & Associates, and I represent uh, Spurwink Woods LLC uh, for this proposed project to be known as Spurwink Woods. Uh, the applicants of Spurwink Woods LLC are, are all here, uh, Jim McFarlane, Craig Cooper, and Skip Murray. Um, before I begin uh, the presentation, I would like to just mention some of the other team members that uh, provided technical information um, as part of this application. Uh, Goro Palma Consulting Engineers acted as the civil engineers as well as the traffic engineers. Owen Haskell uh, were, were the surveyors. Statewide surveys provided the wetland delineation and planning decisions uh, were the planners that provided the fiscal community impact statement. <clears throat> um, tonight's presentation will begin with uh, sort of a, an overview of the existing conditions plan and followed by a presentation of the uh, subdivision plan. And um, as, as you said, this is a completeness uh, application or a completeness meeting. Uh, so I will provide sort of a general overview and not really get into a lot of the details. Um, with respect to the existing conditions uh, plan, the site area is a total of 24.97 acres. It is zoned in the residential C district. Uh, the property is located between Dermot Drive, which is located uh, right here and is part of the Hamlin Street subdivision. So the property is located between Dermot Drive and Kildare Road, which is off of Columbus Road. Abutting the property uh, to the north, uh, we have the Hamlin Street subdivision. Uh, we also have single family residences that front Spoonwick Road. <coughs> to the east, there are single family residential lots, which are off of Macaulay Road. Uh, to the south is Kildare Road and uh, some single-family residences and uh, a portion of the Canterbury on the Cape condominium project abuts this portion of the property. And then to the west is uh, land owned by Kenneth Maxwell. The topo of the project, as, as you can see, it's uh, it's, it's a varying topography, uh, a lot of uh, undulation. Um, a lot of these areas here, designated by the contour lines, are actual um, knolls of, of ledge that crop out of the, uh, the ground. Um, we have a high point in this area of 130, elevation 130, and a low point in this corner of the property of 65. So there's, there's a fair amount of elevation change across the property. Uh, as I said, Dale Brewer of Statewide Surveys provided the, uh, the wetland delineation. Uh, he did this in, uh, during the spring and summer months of uh, this year. Dale is a certified soil scientist and a wetland specialist with over 10 years of experience. Uh, you probably are a familiar with his work since uh, we have used him on other projects before the board. Um, there is a, uh, an RP1 wetland that actually this was the only um, wetland that Dale did not delineate. Uh, this wetland was delineated as part of the Hamlin Street uh, subdivision and was uh, peer reviewed by Woodlot Alternatives for the town of Cape Elizabeth um, during that during that time. So basically we used that uh, delineation. Dale provided the delineation on all of the other wetlands. We have an RP2 wetland that surrounds the RP1 wetland um, and these areas are pockets of forested wetlands that are um, throughout, the, throughout the property. We have a stream that crosses the property in this location here. Uh, utilities, uh, the site is well serviced by existing public utilities. We have a public sewer in uh, Dermont Road as well as South Street and Kildare Road. We have an 8-inch public water in Dermot 
drive in Kildare Road, and we have uh, overhead electric telephone and cable also in Dermont and Kildare. And the property fronts on um, public road frontages, uh, we have a, a small frontage here on Springwick Road, we have frontage on Dermont Drive, and frontage on Kildare Road. Uh, the only other item uh, shown on this plan are areas of ledge outcrop that were surveyed um, and designated on the plan. Uh, once we collected all this information, the next step in the process, as you know, is to determine the overall density, uh, maximum allowable density. Um, the ordinance has a, a very uh, specific formula to use. Uh, we identified um, areas of unsuitable land, and in this case, there were three categories. We took 15% uh, for streets. Uh, we totaled up the amount of wetlands, which amounts to 4.96 acres, and we calculated the exposed bedrock. We added those three unsuitable, or those categories up, and it came to 8.91 acres. Take that, subtract it from the gross acreage, and we come up with a net residential area of 16.06 .06 acres. Uh, we then applied the, uh, the, the density, the 15,000 square foot per lot um, to the net residential acreage to come up with a total allowable lots of 46 uh, lots or units. And the project is proposing 42. And this leads us to the, to the proposed subdivision plan. Um, and I just want to mention that the we took several steps um, in arriving at, at this layout. Number one, um, as I said, we collected uh, and analyzed all the existing conditions of the property. Uh, we held several meetings with the town staff to discuss uh, various alternatives uh, for the layout and uh, the merits of each. Uh, we held a neighborhood meeting, which was well attended. And with that information, uh, we then prepared a schematic plan that we came to you uh, in a workshop session and presented to you and got your comments. And that plan, that schematic plan, has been refined into what we're presenting to you this evening, the preliminary subdivision plan. Spirit Woods consists of 26 single-family lots and 19 condominium units on 25 acres. Uh, we utilized the open space zoning provisions of the ordinance um, and <clears throat> we uh, developed 22, they're actually uh, an arrangement of 22 clustered lots along this curvilinear roadway. The 23rd lot is actually an existing residence located off of Kildare Road, which is part of Spanish Woods. The average lot size is 9,000 square feet. Uh, the homes will be modest in size, ranging from 2,200 to 2,500 square feet. Uh, these will be three bedrooms, two and a half baths. <clears throat> and this uh, graphic here is an example of some of the models that, um, or at least these, these four, are some of the examples of the single family homes that will be built. The 19 condominiums are situated in the westerly portion of the property. Uh, they consist of, there are, there are a total of 10 buildings, um, nine two-unit buildings in a single unit located here. The architecture consists of one and a half story Cape style structure, which includes a two car garage per unit. And that's that example there. Um, the condos will be geared or marketed towards the empty nester. Uh, they will also contain approximately 2,500 square feet, three bedroom, two and a half baths. The layout of the development, that is the, the, the roadway, the, the arrangement of the lots, the condominiums, the open space, <coughs> uh, was designed to preserve the, the more sensitive 
features of the property, particularly the wetlands and the, uh, the significant uh, topographical knolls. And we've incorporated those, those features primarily in this central open space here. Uh, the open space, uh, particularly in this area here, will serve as a common vegetated buffer between the condominiums in the single family lots. Uh, we have also preserved, as you can see, the RP1 and RP2 wetlands in the northerly uh, portion of the property. As indicated on the, on the plan, uh, we have incorporated a, a quite extensive trail system that meanders throughout the, the open space and even around the condominiums. Um, this uh, trail system has been designed to connect to existing town-owned land as well as connecting to uh, existing trails that are either on the property or just off of the property. Uh, this trail system is intended to be an amenity for the residents. Um, it will be available for the abutting neighborhoods as well as the general public to use. Um, in accordance with the open space zoning section of the ordinance, uh, we are required to provide a minimum of 40% of the gross acreage as open space, of which a third of that has to be usable. Uh, Springwick Woods incorporates 10.5 acres of open space, or 42% of the gross acreage, and at least 5.9 acres of the open space is usable, or 56%. And it is the intention of the applicants to either dedicate this open space uh, to the town or to provide an easement uh, for public use. The roadway system, which is designed to be a public road, um, it's 22 feet wide in accordance with the ordinance, uh, will connect to Dermont Road in this location here. It will wind its way through the property uh, again, avoiding and you know, minimizing the wetlands uh, to provide access to the condominium uh, development uh, in this area. Uh, there will be a short cul-de-sac. Uh, this is about 140 feet uh, long. Uh, and there will be a connected road to Kildare Road uh, called Chicory Way. Uh, and as you know, the, uh, we are required to provide uh, two means of access to public ways for a project of, of this nature. Um, Astor Lane, which is the lane providing access to the condominiums, uh, will remain private and is part of the, will be owned and maintained uh, by the association of the condominiums. <coughs> Utilities, uh, water, will be connected to uh, both Dermont and Kildare, forming a loop system. Uh, sewer will connect to the South Street sewer located here. And the underground electric telephone cable will be connected to Dermont. With regard to the stormwater, uh, we are located, this, this particular property is located in what DEP has termed a, an urban repaired watershed or a developed watershed. It's part of the Trout Brook uh, watershed. And consequently the, the requirements and the standards are a lot more stringent uh, for an urban repaired watershed in terms of water, water quality. Um, and to meet these standards uh, we Basically, we're required to provide three basins. Uh, there are two wet retention ponds and one dry detention basin. And this is explained in detail under Exhibit 13 in your booklet. Um, other exhibits that we have included in our package uh, include a traffic study as Exhibit 12 that was prepared by Tom Gorrell and a fiscal impact study uh, as Exhibit 15. 
Finally, in addition to the preliminary subdivision application, we are also applying for a resource protection permit for the wetland disturbance. And uh, under the summary of completeness um, of, in Maureen's report, uh, she did identify one item as a partial completeness. Um, and this was basically brought to our attention after we had submitted the package that apparently it is the town's uh, policy to not only permit uh, wetlands that are being impacted by um, the roadways, but also to impact those small portions of wetlands that um, happen to be on a lot. So, and, and I think that's what Maureen was referring to, as well as a wetland uh, in this location here on what we have labeled as a paper street. Um, and we will, we will do that. I mean, it, our, our next submission will include um, those areas of wetland that are on individual lots. Uh, we have also reviewed Steve Harding's uh, memo, letter, um, and I think that he indicated, uh, he did indicate that um, as far as he was concerned that this application met the completeness um, for the submission uh, requirements. Um, he did comment that his comments that he did prepare are more engineering oriented um, that relate to the design details of the project. Thank you. Okay, thank you. At this point, the board needs to make a determination of completeness for this application. Does that have, anybody have any questions or comments with respect to that issue? David? issue of the wetlands that was just identified that uh, Mr. Mitchell talked about. Is, is that satisfied as a completeness item? Yeah, I mean, he is, I mean, they're, what they're showing is that there is a, not a large portion, but there's small portions of wetlands on lots 5, 23, 20, I think that's 21, and 19. And their plans do show that, uh, but they had not intended to get it permitted at this time, so they didn't include it in their calculations for total amount of wetland alteration potential fill. Um, in the Blueberry Ridge project, we had two lots where small corners of them were um, wetland areas. And I think our discussion at that time, your discussion was that, you know, these lots are small, the expectation is that property owners being what they are will want to improve their property and probably will end up doing something to those wetlands. So why don't we just include it in the permit application now? Uh, the other area that John mentioned is an area where we're discussing a uh, right-of-way connection that would dead end at the abutting property and there's a small wetland in the middle of the alignment. And if the town ever wants to take advantage of that connection, we might also just include the permitting for the alteration of that wetland now. So the applicant hasn't refused to show wetlands. It's just a matter of interpretation. I think they're saying they're willing to make those changes in their next submission. Yeah. We, we uh, in our application, we <clears throat> I think we have a, a total of 2,200 square feet of wetland alteration. Um, by adding these individual pieces of wetland within the lot, it totals 10,000 square feet. Well still as a tier one with DEP, so we're, we're willing to do that. We just didn't want to get into to a tier two application. I don't see that as a... What's, what's the complete? threshold for... What? Those are the thresholds for DEP, oh. yeah. Uh, once you exceed 15,000 square feet, you're into a tier two. Oh, it's 15. Yeah. So if you include all this, you're only at, still only at We're 10. still tier one. Thank you. David, did you have another comment? No, I guess that I uh, would say that the uh, issue of the wetland doesn't seem, seem to indicate it's not a complete. Okay, I tend to agree. Uh, is there a motion then? Sure. Motion to the board to consider. 
before the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented the application of Square Rank Woods LLC for preliminary subdivision review and a resource protection permit for Square Rank Woods the 42 units subdivision located between Dermot Drive Kildare Road be deemed complete. Good motion. Is there a second? It's been seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Motion carries. Um, a few significant housekeeping issues for the board to consider now. Uh, first, I assume we, we want a site walk. Uh, that's, a, that's a given. Um, and we also need to talk about a public hearing. Let's talk about the site walk first. Uh, Maureen had asked us all to bring our calendars. Of course, I left mine. Uh, at home, however, I assume we're going to do this on a Saturday morning. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly want to stay away from the holiday weekend coming up. Right. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I was going to propose the, the third of December. That would be the first Saturday of December. Would that and work? It, it, and I was going to say eight o'clock. <laughs> um, John, <I'll> make <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be here December third. Um, I can do it the following Saturday, or I could do it the Saturday. Before then, but Saturday, Saturday before, before the state, after is right after Thanksgiving, and I know there'll be a lot of people away, including, no, including myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, if at all possible, um, I would prefer to have it the following Saturday, the tenth. Yes, I can do the tenth. Okay. Does that work for everybody? I think that would that will also allow us time enough to to do some layout because we're going to have to get a surveyor out here to stake the road out. Okay. Uh, is uh, 8 o'clock okay? On the 10th? On the Saturday, December 10th. Uh, and members of the public are welcome to attend the site walk. Oh, that's a good question. Where are we going to meet? Where would be the best place? Probably the end of Dermot Drive? Or? The end of Dermot Drive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's no houses in house, so there's plenty of parking. There's just, there's just one on the corner here. So. Yeah. Okay. But uh, there's, there's quite a bit of room on Dermot Drive. Uh, and the, we don't typically provide notice of a site walk. Uh, so anybody in attendance tonight, if you could get the word out to your friends and neighbors so that they're aware of it, uh, we certainly welcome your attendance. And we could, we'll post it on the website. Um, and Maureen, could you also send an email to all the planning board members because we have people who aren't here tonight? Okay. And the Conservation Commission. Okay, the, the next housekeeping issue then is a, a public hearing. Obviously, we're going to have a public hearing. Uh, we, would, we typically have a public hearing both in preliminary subdivision review and also final subdivision review. So there will be two opportunities for the public to be heard. Now, the reason we do that is typically these plans get amended pretty significantly from preliminary to final review. So we will have that second hearing so that there'll be an opportunity to comment on what has changed with the project uh, when it comes back to the planning board. Um, that being said, does the board have any thoughts on the public hearing issue? We, we just sent one now, right? right? We don't set both now. But there just have been some no. emails from a, a number of people, right. or at least I recall seeing a couple uh, residents Concerned that December tw when is our next public hearing? December twentieth. I'll tell you how many because I went through all the letters and counted everything. Okay. Concerned about traffic, I think there were six or seven. But the, there was a concern yes. raised about the December twentieth hearing falls very close to the holiday. Would we consider having two public hearings? I'm inclined to do our one public hearing on December twentieth for preliminary subdivision review, and then we'll do our second public hearing when it comes time for final subdivision review, assuming we get there. Uh, but I'd certainly welcome any other comments from the planning board. I'd David. go along with that. I think that's a fair arrangement. And again, if you are unable to attend the hearing on December 20th, I encourage anybody who has comments to send them to us via email or in regular mail. <laughs> uh, you can also ask a friend or neighbor to read your statement during the public hearing if you like. Uh, so you, your views will certainly be heard, even if you cannot attend on the 20th. 
So we will then have a public hearing on December 20th. Um, there are a few other issues that were mentioned that I don't, I don't, I'll be happy to get to them, but I wonder That's if anybody else has any questions. Do we need a formal motion to put it to that meeting? We do. Yes. Yeah, why don't we... Fair uh, enough, fair enough. Barbara. I don't know if now's the appropriate time or not, but I'd like to talk about another traffic study. That I think now is an appropriate time, so Okay, um, there are many, many abutters who are very concerned about traffic. There are over 36 of you, I think, who mentioned traffic as your biggest concern and going through your neighborhood. And certainly, we do commiserate with you, believe me. I, we don't know what the final decisions are going to be. This traffic study that was done by the applicants is their study and, and their choice of person doesn't really talk much about alleviating anything that might happen in the neighborhood and talks about speed but doesn't account for the fact that most people don't abide by the speed limits or many people don't and I think it behooves us to have an independent traffic study done for the planning board I think it's very important so I would move that we have an independent study done okay I, I agree. And I would, I would ask that in that study they talk about in much greater detail ways to mitigate any problems that they foresee might occur in an abutting neighborhood. What I might also suggest is we consider sharing with the, uh, our consultant the concerns raised by the neighbors in their emails so they the consultant will have a first-hand understanding of, of what those are. Okay. Go ahead. I just want to make sure I'm clear that what, what you're asking is to hire a traffic engineer to review the work of the, of the applicant that's been submitted and to supplement it wherever they see it's needed. Okay. And, and to consider very carefully the abutting neighborhoods and the effect on them. If the board would like, what, what I would suggest is that we hire Wilbur Smith Associates. Uh, it's a firm that we've had. Um, is it Wilbur Smith? It's Tom Errico who did the studies for the high school traffic light and also the traffic light up at Shore Road. So there is a relationship that the town has with that firm already, and he's also worked with those associates. Unless there's a problem. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that's that's reasonable. No problem. And that's then work that could be started. Whenever the, okay. And will we see that by the 20th? Is, well. Okay. It would be very helpful if we had that before the 20th. I will send an email to all of you when I have an estimate of the time. Well, not to put pressure, but even by the 10th would be nice, but that, because if we're going to be out there, then it will be nice to know what our engineer is saying. Certainly by the 20th. Uh, there, did, any, did any members of the board have any other issues that we needed to raise now before we get to a motion? Go ahead, Barbara. Um, there, there is a fairly extensive discussion about um, stormwater drainage, and um, which I don't always understand very well. I try. But the stormwater drainage and runoff and things like that. But one of the questions I have, given the development, the new development that's going in, the clothier development, have the wetlands been affected in any way? And has there been runoff that hasn't been taken into consideration now that needs to be taken into consideration in relationship to this project? I know recently in our area, one house was built on one lot. And I was startled when I saw stuff slipping into a, a lot I never would have expected it to from that development. Have, have you looked at all at what's gone on with this, with drainage occurring because of the construction next to you, and then what will happen with construction on your parcel? I haven't looked at, in detail, I haven't looked at how they're handling drainage here, but I can tell you that I mean, we're, we're controlling all of our runoff uh, to pre-development rates. We're not... Except the town wasn't completely happy with the method of you're doing it I, in, in terms of the 
detention those basins. basins. They yeah, talked about getting I, I would like to maybe get a dialogue going with the planning board regarding these basins. I mean, we, we also would prefer not to have them, but we're, we, we've, you know, we're sort of um, mandated by the state to follow their regulations, which require both water, uh, water um, uh, quantity and water quality. May I ask the town planner, what's the reason for, I certainly have my own reasons to encourage more creative stormwater management techniques, but you, why, what's, what specific issues are you trying to address in asking the applicant to go to bat for the town with the DEP, because that's, in a, is fair, that a fair, fair characterization? Well, it's, it's fair, except that um, I haven't asked the applicant. I've uh, told the applicant that town staff is going to go to bat, and they're going to be there, too. So um, we're not sending them all by themselves. Well, fair in the ass. Yeah. I, and I appreciate and that, that. And that wouldn't be right. But the town engineer and the town public works director and myself plan to attend a meeting that I scheduled with uh, the DEP administrator in hopes of finding a better solution that will not create flooding situations down the line, but at the same time will not create three holes in the ground mm. where we have to cut down all the trees and blast out the ledge, and they become great places for trash to collect. Um, it seems like we ought to be able to find a better way to do that. And while I can think of ways that fit within the town ordinance requirements, mm -hmm. um, I don't think what I'm talking about would be that acceptable to DEP, which is why we're saying let's go together. And I know the applicant is exploring some other options as well, um, but our goal is pretty much to get rid of those detention basins. It was my reaction when I saw the plan. That certainly that's one of the le less attractive features of it. I didn't realize that was even an option, but certainly if the applicant's willing to do that and the town staff... We're, we're, we're definitely uh, willing to do it, but there, there's, I, <laughs> I've dealt with DEP enough to know that they have got to exercise a lot of flexibility for us to get rid of these, these basins. Um, Just but we are, we are exploring sure. other alternatives, um, and we, we are going to attend that meeting. And that's, that's something that I'd like to see on the site when, you, when we go out for the site walk. I don't know what's there, and getting to these areas is going to be yep. helpful, but we'll, we'll, aside we'll from the roadway and traffic issues, I'm going to be looking at where these things are going to be located yep. uh, at the end of the day, and, and I'm giving you that as a heads up so that when we're out there, um, we have a clear idea of what we're looking at. Yep, we'll have stakes. Or did you have another comment? Yeah, I just wanted, and I understand that, you know, DEP isn't going to like this, but just to give you a perspective on this, the original calculation by the applicant on wetland alteration, actual what they're going to do out there, not mm. what's going to happen in three years, was 2,200 square feet for 42 homes. Uh, most of their drainage is going into the wetland at the rear, at the bottom of the site. And that wetland then shoots off in a, on that map, it's going to be up and to the left into a much larger wetland, and that's located in South Portland. I believe I gave you a copy of a recent application for that wetland that's absorbing all of this water in South Portland, an application for 4,200 square feet of wetland alteration for one lot. So it just seems like we need to start looking at this in a better way. Dave. I have a question while we're on it, John. Is it your opinion that those detention ponds will be wet, wet all the time? or are these, these two are designed as ponds, wet ponds. This one is designed as a dry basin. Yep. Barbara. John, just so that I understand this completely, you're thinking that with all the construction on the site and, and very little, little change to the wetlands, that the water flow will not increase at all and affect any of the neighborhoods outside of this parcel. Is yes. That correct? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I'm full of questions here. One person in their email asked, is it possible 
to change those streets. It seemed like a good suggestion to me to one-way streets to make a better traffic pattern. I guess I would ask Maureen that. Um, Hamlin, Dermot, and South. Well, is that any kind of a possibility in terms of regulating traffic? South Street right now is mostly a private dirt road. But it's going to be changed, though. No, no. The, the applicant is building only a portion of South Street that will actually touch on the gravel portion of South Street. But the rest of South Street is an unpaved, 18-foot wide gravel road. So and I do all the traffic will go on Dermot and Hamlin. The presumption is that most people will, will choose to drive on the paved roads instead of on South Street, absolutely. Okay. Are they going to be widened at all, or is no, the here widening them? The, they widen the expectation them is that, that South Street and Dermot Drive and Hamlin Street and Stevenson Street will function as local streets. And the standard for a local street is 22 feet wide. And as, as indicated in the traffic report, those streets have plenty of excess capacity. Yeah, I read I tried to read the whole report. Yeah. And you're giving your streets to the town within the development? Yes, except for... Except for the condominiums. Condominiums, yeah. Are there any further questions or comments at this point? Well, just to follow on to Barbara, you all set? Are you all set, Barbara? Yeah. Why don't you follow up? <laughs> if you have a new issue, that's yeah. fine, too. Um, some minor issues. The, uh, the South Street right of way extension, um, there was a request to bring the right of way right up until said dirt road, gravel road. Is that, uh, have you seen this request? Is this from Marine? Right. You're talking about the Paper Street extension? No, the, on the other end, as I understand it, Maureen, it's up there. There's, the plans show that the right of way stops prior to the end of the property boundary. Is that accurate, Maureen? Oh, this is, this is not, this is um, the connection to the Maxwell land address. Oh, so it's the other side. The it other is the other side. And we're, we're working on it. Okay. The intent is still to go ahead with that requirement. The applicant is willing to provide the right of way to the tenant. Okay. Um, but we've got some complications that we're working on. Okay. The, uh, the, the street name change, is that? I'm yeah, sure, yeah, we're going to, we're going to change. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was a big deal. And then the uh, util overall utility plan, which is something we've already help. submitted that. Okay. Yep. Sure. Set that. Um, John, the affordable housing, there are three lots. So we're going to go with the 5%. And you were going to go with the 5% uh, low income. We've designated lot 11 as one, and lots 21 and 22 as the other two. One question I have is they're supposed to be dispersed throughout the development. They're really not very well dispersed. We have two right next to each other. I don't know if that's important or not particularly important. Um, it, it is a standard, and the board gets to make the determine about whether they're adequately dispersed. Uh, what you have done in Cross Hill, however, is where you had two lots that were using the zero lot line provision so that they could share a wall then those you had two in one place and, and you did allow that but that's no not the case. right you can you know it's within your authority to to look you really yeah. should be looking to make sure that that's what we are proposing yeah the shared wall so those they're two. not attached houses maybe uh, i'm not understanding on lots 21 and 22 we intend to build um there'd be two units Two affordable units on those two lots. No, but they don't have a shared wall. They would. They would have a shared wall. And yeah. that, that that's actually that's happened in Cross Hill, correct? We, yeah, we did it. Actually, I was just up there this afternoon, and um, it's when you know you can take a cape at the front door this way, and another one where the front door is that way, and you, you kind of put them side by side. And what it does is it tends to increase the overall appearance of the bulk of the building and it can blend it in with the market rate homes. Oh, so they're not so actually attached, but they're... They are physically attached, and the lot line, they're each on their own lot, but the lot line runs right through the middle of the house. So the house that sits like this, the lot line is right there, and then you've got another hot house that sits right like that. What happens to setback requirements? 
on the lot on the shared lot line, you can reduce the setback to zero, which you can do now. Okay. If you say so, okay. No, that's okay if you're doing it that way to yep. make the appearance look more. Thank you. At this point, is there a motion then for the board to consider? Did you have any other questions for us, John? No, it was just, just the stormwater. That I wanted to get a feel for, and uh, you know, I think I have okay. from the wood. Yeah. We got a motion. Be it ordered. The above application be tabled to the regular December 20 meeting, 2005, the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be heard. Motion has been made for the public Help, hearing. I should say. It's been seconded. All those in favor? Okay, the motion carries. Thank you very much. See you uh, on the 10th, the 10th then for the site walk. I move for adjournment. Uh, that concludes the new business. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? All those oh. in favor? Of adjourning, motion carries.